scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There are many spirits. But there is only one spirit, the spirit of the Lord, that is able to give men liberty. That you know he is there because there must be liberty. I don't know what area you are trusting God to visit tonight, but I want you to turn it into a desperate prayer. Father, visit me. Visit me. Someone is praying. The Bible says that everyone that asketh receiveth. Lord, touch me tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, visit me tonight. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, visit us by your spirit. Amen. Let the sick be healed. Amen. Let the oppressed be delivered. Amen. Let every closed door be opened. Amen. Rewrite the stories of men. And we pray that Jesus will be glorified in our midst. For in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. God bless you. Please be seated just for a moment. And let your heart be opened. Because indeed, when God is in a place, He is there to do us good. Um, thank you again. Thank you so much, sir. And your dear wife and the entire leadership for this opportunity. To be a blessing to god's people i just want to charge our hearts very quickly and then we begin to pray what should we expect tonight the move of the spirit in all its diverse manifestations bringing healing bringing deliverance rewriting the stories of men you read about men who had an encounter with the god of the bible and their lives changed a weak man like Gideon had an encounter with the Lord and he became a valiant man who could command an army to even defeat the Midianites. The Bible is full of ordinary people who at the instance of their encounter with the God of heaven, Saul became Paul. Is that true? Abraham became Abraham. Sarai became Sarah. May God rewrite someone's story tonight. You believe that shout a louder amen. amen hallelujah now if you missed any of the previous sessions let me request that you do well to find out how to get the teachings and listen um, because it gives perspective to what god is doing tonight i am convinced that every time god puts together a prophetic meeting such as this 
there are at least five things that must be experienced in that meeting as an attestation that God visited his people. Let me run through them very quickly. Number one, there must be encounters. Any meeting that is God ordained must have encounters. What is an encounter? I told you yesterday that an encounter is a supernatural experience that makes God real to you. That makes God real to you. A supernatural experience even by the Spirit of God that makes God real to a man. Number two, in any God-ordained meeting, there must be transformation. Transformation, transformation, transformation. Hallelujah. There is a lady here, I just saw a vision. The power of God is going to begin to come on you and there is a prophetic mantle that has been looking for you for a very long time. This is what God is revealing to me. I don't know who that lady is. There is a call of God upon your life. This is not just an empty, this is not just a gift of prophecy. There is the call of God. And this impartation is going to begin a season of very strange dealings in the spirit until you emerge a woman of power in the spirit. Now, I don't know where that lady is, but I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. I stir up that prophetic fountain. Help the lady. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. A new wine coming upon a new wine skin. A new dimension, even by the Spirit of God. Let the door of a new prophetic season be opened up to you. A door of a new prophetic season be opened up to you. Because God is looking for men and even women whom he will use. Even though this word is for a particular lady, we declare let the prophetic fountains be stirred up in the mighty name of Jesus, the son of the living God. I'd like you to be sensitive. This is not just some jamboree of a preacher. This is God attending to the needs and the cries of people the needs and the cries of people hallelujah because some of you he brought you to this conference it's a kingdom conference so that you will have that stirring of the spirit even by the spirit of god now the lord is that spirit now the lord is that spirit I feel fire on my hands and this is an impartation of the healing anointing there are many people here part of the grace you are about to contact I'm seeing the number 14 one four I don't know where they are but I stretch my hands may that grace find you right now I ignite that fire in the name of Jesus you will watch the wonder walking miracle walking power of the spirit please help them through your hands and through your life in the name of jesus of these 14 people wherever you are i stretch my hands let there be that ignition right now an outpouring of that spirit upon you upon your ministry you will never be the same in the name of jesus the son of the living god fire is burning in this place help them please in the name of jesus the son of the living god that you will never be the same again the fire that burns the old and opens you up to the new i release that fire upon you i release it upon your altar i release it upon your destiny the fire that burns away the old 
and brings in the new in the name of Jesus Christ Aleisha parosa secrete veretus cabalando sia Caraca parosca de vrende gebeleco siata there is a man of God here I don't know who you are but there's been extreme struggle in ministry this is spiritual attack it looks like you enter the season and everything just dried up in your life in the name of Jesus Christ by the Spirit of the Living God I speak to that man of God wherever you are by the anointing of the Holy Ghost let that which was dead come back to life now let that which was dead come back to life now let that which was dead as touching the call of god upon your life come back to life now in the name of jesus christ let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let it cover all the Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover. Hallelujah. So I said, please be seated. That in every God ordained meeting, just help those under the anointing. And then I'd like you to please be sensitive. In every God-ordained meeting, number one, there must be encounters as we have so lavishly experienced in the course of this conference. Number two, there must be transformation. If a meeting is certainly God-ordained, there must be transformation. And that by the word of God. Number three, in every God-ordained meeting, there must be the move of the spirit to heal to deliver and to bring supernatural solutions to god's people healing and deliverance is not the only thing god's people need they need supernatural solutions solutions that answer to the real issues that plague their lives many people may not realize the kinds of sacrifice that god's people make in the midst of their pain financial issues health issues demonic oppression issues with career and when they come to jesus there must be an opportunity for him by his spirit to show up and provide supernatural solutions hallelujah number four there must be impartation impartation the transference activations and transference of graces hallelujah because one of the many things that the spirit of god seeks to achieve in conferences like this that is why he allows for the convergence of several people carrying several graces is that these dimensions be distributed across his body so that people who came here without certain possibilities working in their lives can access the grace dimensions of those possibilities that they desire this is true and finally there must be an opportunity for fellowship fellowship according to psalm 133 behold how good and pleasant it is the bible says when brethren dwell together in unity it likens it to the oil that comes upon the head of aaron the priest down to his bed to his garment to his cat he says for there in that state not just the place in that state god has commanded the blessing even life forevermore hallelujah and we thank god because 
these are the things that we've been experiencing in this place and i respect the fact that supremacy has been given to the word of god the sound communication of god's word to build our hearts i just want to charge our hearts um, our time is fast spent i don't intend to keep us longer than the time allotted the bible says in matthew chapter 5 and verse 13 it says we are the salt of the earth jesus is teaching now and he began to teach the disciples and he said ye are the salt of the earth he says but if the salt has lost its sever its saltiness he says wherewith shall it be salted it is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot by men then he says next verse that ye are the light of the world he calls you a city that is set on a hill and by reason of that position it cannot be hidden then he says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick or a lampstand and the bible says it giveth light to how many if you are light you give light to how many not to some it giveth light if you are light indeed your relevance should cut across systems structures religion it says if you are light your light gives illumination to all not some not some that was the true light that lighted every man that was the true light there are false lights they carry a semblance of liberty but it says that was the true light that lighted every man then he leaves us with a final charge verse 16 he says if it is true that you are that light he says let your light the word let is the word permit allow allow that light to so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and as a result glorify your father in heaven we began a discussion talking about the king and his desire I'm not going into all of that but then I did tell you that when you meet the king you are always left with a mandate that you have an obligation to the king remember that your obligation to the king is your loyalty your surrenderedness and then your obedience this is your obligation to the king if at any point in your kingdom adventure you are found wanting in this tripartite requirements you are not faithful your faithfulness is measured by the degree of your loyalty your degree of surrenderedness and then your degree of obedience to the king but when you encounter the king he now leaves you with a mandate that mandate is to become an extension of himself to your world now he calls you light the same thing god is called god is light jesus was called the light of the world and he calls us light and then he says we are salt you see salt has two principal assignments as we know number one is for value to add taste number two is for preservation are we together now it is it's amazing that when you cook it is never too late to add salt there are ingredients that when you don't add at a certain time that meal cannot be the meal you intended is that true but even if you make a mistake and forget salt even at the table there is still an opportunity to add it there and it will not look like you ever made a mistake this is the description of you that means you are never a disadvantage to any system it does not matter the time of arrival provided you show up in that system there must be a space for your relevance he calls you salt that you add value to any system are we together that means the next time you find yourself in your place of work do not think your technical skills are the only thing you are bringing no you will be mistaken a thousand times you are like the ark of god in the house of women Edom. beyond the technical skills you are providing you bring your chiefest value is the presence of god in that corporation are we together now yes so you are the salt of the earth it says 
but it is your responsibility to keep your saltiness alive so that when you are in the place they can feel your saltiness indeed the power to preserve from decadence and then the power to add taste then he says you are the light of the world he likens you to a city that is set on a hill and by reason of that it cannot be hidden that means visibility is every believer's heritage in christ visibility and influence is not it's not something for a few people are we together now it is god's it is god's desire the king's desire for everyone to be elevated to a position where you can attract the attention of all and sundry that they can learn God through your life and through the excellency of the results that you command. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Then he uses another example. He says, neither do men light a lamp. He never said, neither do men put a lamp. If the lamp is not lit, it doesn't carry any value. But once fire comes upon that lamp, he says, you cannot hide it again. But it should be lifted and put in a position where it supplies light to everyone in the room. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. When the king sends you to represent him, his reputation is invested upon you. That means when you live a life that does not bear fruit, when you live a life that does not produce results, it's an indictment on the integrity of the one who sent you. He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? And they said nothing. There are many people who claim to be sent by Jesus. I'm not just talking in ministry. The average believer from a kingdom dimension believes he's an advocate, not just of righteousness, but of the kingdom. And that is true. The Bible says so. The Bible calls us ambassadors. And in the verse we just read, it calls us salt. It calls us light. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, it calls us witnesses. If it is true that we are light, we are salt, we are ambassadors, we are witnesses, then it means that the reputation of the king must have been invested in my life and your life. It means we do not just come to Pharaoh and tell him I met the God of the Hebrews and he said let my people go Pharaoh will not let the people go because of that grammar you must bring before you a testament that shows you really met the king are we together this is why results are very powerful they are very powerful because they they give credence to the fact that you were truly sent by God are we together now Paul a man approved of God there are corresponding apostolic signs many believers do not know why we don't command the kind of kingdom influence now in leadership and, and thank God for the kind of church that I'm ministering in you're not ignorant in this area at all but in leadership we teach that there are several cadres as far as influence is concerned and there is a cadre in leadership where the influence that you exert upon people is at the instance of the excellency of the results that you command. Are we together now? Yes. There are dimensions of the influence that comes because of the title, the office that you hold. So people do not respect you just because they love you. They honor the office that you occupy. Then there is a dimension of leadership that is because of the excellency of your character. Are we together now? They love you because of a disposition of moral excellence. But there is a dimension of influence and leadership that happens at the instance of results. That when you are bankrupt of results and you cannot lead that organization to provide provable results, nobody is going to be loyal to you. This is the kind of world we have found ourselves. So it's not enough to say Jesus heals, Jesus saves, Jesus lifts. He has sent me. He said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The word blessed means empowered to produce results. So when you say, I come in the name of the Lord, people don't just say, amen, you are welcome. They watch for the signs of authenticity. When you buy a product that claims it came from a company, there are certain seals and certain codes around that product. Is that true? That helps you to distinguish the real from the fake. 
say perhaps it's a toothpaste they will even advertise that when you buy toothpaste from us check you will see something maybe a, a silver label or something like that so when you say you have been sent from god there must be attesting signs and tonight this meeting is not just a miracle service to heal and pray for the sick but it's largely an impartation service that for god's sake something will rest upon your life in the name of jesus christ shouting and saying i'm from god is not how it is done your results are evangelists hear me there is a sermon only your results can preach you are not the only one who was supposed to be an evangelist your results are also evangelists and there is an audience that only your results can preach to if you are the only one doing the evangelism yourself and your results are silent you are not preaching well both you and your results should preach when moses came and met pharaoh he spoke once and the rods continued to speak him. Are we together? Yes. This, this is the same strategy that the secular world has used to enslave believers. They don't talk so loud, but my goodness, their results are ever speaking. From one dimension and one level of success, we criticize them, but we are still slaves to them. Are we together? Yes. Let me show you a few scriptures. In Matthew chapter 8, from verse 23 to 27, I want to show you the kind, the portrait of what God desires for you to become. If it is true that you are one with Christ, and if it is true that you are sent as an ambassador by the king. Matthew 8, we'll begin our reading from verse 23. The Bible says, And when he, the he being Jesus, was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him 24 reading to 27 and behold the bible says there arose a great tempest in the sea in so much that the ship was covered with the waves but he was asleep 25 and his disciples came to him and awoke him saying lord save us we perish and he said unto them why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? I love Jesus. And then he arose. This is what it means to be light. This is what it means to be salt. It's not to join in the lamentation. When those who are not light are afraid and confused, they run to you. And when they run to you, it, it takes more than sympathy. Jesus encouraged them, but he turned. And the Bible says he rebuked the winds and the sea. Help me. And there was great results. And there was great results. You can call it anything. But the fact that he took action and there was results. That the disciples could see. The next verse please. The Bible says, but the men marveled. Saying, what manner of pastor is this? What manner of businessman is this? What manner of entrepreneur is this? We've seen other kinds, but what manner of man is this? That even the business world obey him. What manner of preacher is this? That you can compel resources, you can compel men that should be saved. Obedience is what made them to marvel. The moment you are truly obedient to the king, everything the king created must be obedient to you listen carefully your obedience the, the the authority and the dominion you command is not just an arbitrary dominion is a is a reflection principle the degree to which you are loyal to the king you are surrendered to the king you are obedient to the king that is the same degree to which creation is compelled to be obedient to you when Jesus came, he so lavishly acknowledged the Father. Even though he was equal with God, he brought himself so low and acknowledged the Father and attested to the fact that he could do nothing without the assistance and the leadership of the Father. Now we see Jesus commanding the winds, commanding the waves. And the Bible says they obeyed him and the people marveled. We understand men obey you, but the wind and the sea inanimate things 
finances obeying you the territory obeying you the earth obeying you are we together the bible says they marveled and that should be your testimony that people will say we've employed people in this company but from the day we brought this person we cannot describe your technical skill is there but it looks like there is something else you have brought to this corporation the dimensions of favor wisdom is open doors are we learning next scripture In Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18 very simple and popular scripture but I want us to read it together read it with conviction are you ready one to read please behold I and the children whom the Lord had given me are for signs and wonders in Lagos for signs and wonders in Nigeria hold on for sign mention the name of everywhere that you should be a sign and a wonder for signs and wonders in the marketplace signs and wonders in Europe in America it says I and the children that the Lord had given me we are for signs and for wonders please look up you know what a sign is the assignment of a sign, a signboard was designed to captivate your attention no matter how distracted you are. So they design a signboard intentionally. They use all of the psychology, all of light, every, there is usually heavy investment in signboards. So that no matter how distracted you are, it becomes too evident to ignore it. But a sign never points you to itself it tells you you are closer to the location when you are headed to a place and you see a sign it says turn left finally you know you are almost there the bible says we are for signs that means by my design something should rise from my life that creation should not ignore me this is not about being arrogant the excellency of the design that God invested his artistry in my making and that if I allow myself to be so constructed I will carry a formation that will compel nations and kings to bear witness to the fact that this is truly a sign I and the children that the Lord had given me it says we are for signs and for wonders in Israel but I like the remaining part from who from the Lord of hosts we are not just signs that appeared running our own agenda we were sent by the king as signs the woman at the well left not just receiving a miracle she ran and she became a sign let me show you how signs work this was a known prostitute six men in her life five men the six not even being a husband and after an encounter with jesus the bible says she left her water the issue of fetching water she ran to the city so she had the potential to do that but not without an encounter the bible says she told everyone without thinking what they would think about her come see a man her witness was so compelling the people had to leave their businesses and say this woman we know her where did this courage suddenly come from come see a man that had told me everything that i ever done they did not come because they loved jesus they came because the sign was a sign indeed and when they came to jesus they had an opportunity to sit down with him and to discuss with him and here was their verdict now we believe not just because of you we have seen for ourselves that is the assignment of a sign that when you come from a family that is known for practicing witchcraft that nobody rises beyond certain levels and my god the lord lifts you by engaging the mysteries that you have taught and by accessing the kinds of graces that will fall upon you this night that you move in a speed that no one can explain in one year in two years you command a level of financial dominion, territorial dominion, where your life becomes a Bible study manual that people can use your life to learn God and say we've not seen him in this fashion. I 
and the children that the Lord has given me we are for signs now when a sign stops pointing to the real object it no longer becomes a sign you see that this is the reason why before he sends you he makes you because the tendency for pride in the midst of result is there and all humans who are not worked on by God will fall victim so he works upon you so that your will becomes to glorify him and when he invests so much of his glory and while the world is clapping for you you are unashamed you can point them and say I am only a sign come and see the one who sent me John said I am the voice of one crying he was not ashamed John chapter 1 and verse 6 there was a man sent from God I like that rendition the Bible says his name was John there was a man sent from God his name was Joshua Selman there was a man a woman sent from God a businessman a businesswoman a politician a career person sent from God you only passed through the womb of your mother you were sent from God and the Bible says his name was John the assignment is in verse 7 the Bible says the same came for a witness that through the excellency of his witness men might believe do you believe all I've said so far so that we do not waste all the prayers and the impartation God is determined to make something out of you tonight that you have never been yet he's, he's, he's a kind is a version of you that is about to be unveiled but it is important for you to understand that in the midst of the glory and the glitz and the glamour remember my teaching he's only decorating the signboard so that you will attract the world indeed and bring them to the king King of my life, you are my all, and I live for you alone. King of my life, you have my all, and I lay my life for you. My heart is yours. My mind is yours, my will is yours, you're the king of my life. That is our creed in this kingdom, everything belongs to you. So when you lift us up, it's so that the world can see us clearer and then we draw them to you unashamedly and intentionally. We let them know that no man can do these things except God be with him. Listen, if you understand what I'm teaching you tonight, it's like you have officially signed the contract of being a sign and a wonder. It's not as if God cannot lift. I'm telling you, it's not as if God cannot bless. But most believers do not understand what it takes. You must have that orientation and that understanding that everything that revolves in the kingdom especially as touching your rising is so that you become a mirror it's called in theology the reflection principle the moon does not have a light of itself it is the degree to which it aligns to the sun that it shines so when you see the moon halfway that is not the true shape of the moon that is only the part of the moon that aligns to the sun the part of you that aligns to God is the part that the world will see shining for some of you the moon is so small you have been so misrepresented because of your disalignment there is something called full moon where the moon aligns perfectly and it can make nights to even become like evening are we together so all this petty pride that is destroying our generation should not even rise you see humility is not just a character trait humility is a revelation is the resultant effect of understanding what I'm teaching you because you see pride is rebellion it means number one you do not even know the king number one you don't know yourself number three you don't know your assignment you 
alone art God and I surrender I surrender that when God lifts you whilst you are holding the billions of naira and all of the money the temptation is that everybody will look at you and say I think there's a language we use in night like, blow <laughs> no. that's too small a reason for God to invest his integrity upon your life the ad that kind of agenda is too is too small but when it becomes that the nations must see your glory, now you are speaking the king's language. When you come to him and say, Lord, invest upon me the healing anointing. All right? What's the purpose for the healing anointing? Lord, I come from a family where nobody has looked. Uh, people have looked down on me and I want to cure that shame. Too small a reason for God to invest that healing anointing. But ladies and gentlemen, when you get to a point where you say, Lord, I know that in this end time you desire your healing power to reach the nations. Can you find a worthy vessel in me that becomes an extension of your possibilities to the nation? You are speaking the king's language. I'm teaching you how to speak to the king. For many years, a woman wanted a child. And the purpose of that child was simply to solve the mockery that was coming from her stepwife and you would think that because of that agenda God will respond it was not enough reason at all but the day she said Lord you are looking for a prophet I've changed my agenda I, I let's let's talk kingdom she prayed once and Samuel arrived let me tell you the truth lamentations out of pain and misery and kingdom driven prayers are two different things unfortunately most of us in the body of Christ invest hours praying the kind of prayer that is founded and garnished with selfishness and sometimes we make very nasty statements as if we forget that it's God we are talking to and we expect him to listen and then to answer All these prayers about mockery and the rest. Now, I'm not, I know that God will always prove a point in your life. But sincerely, I'm telling you how the king operates. If there is anything that drives your passion other than to see him glorified, forget about the investment of his power. Are we learning? Yes. Let me show you one more scripture. Jesus John 14 verse 12 I'm just charging your hearts and we'll pray John 14 12 here's what Jesus said verily verily I say unto you who is speaking now Jesus himself the truth so there is no lie in what you are hearing he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also <laughs> and he says greater works than this shall he do fill my life till all they see is you Lord glorify listen to what I'm saying that's a prayer fill my life till all they see is you Glorify for all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for. When I started ministry, I never knew there was something called honorarium that a man preaches and you can put a basket of fruits and say, thank you, go and eat. I never knew that there was such a thing because that was never the drive. It's an honor to serve his majesty. You see that? Seeing souls saved 
seeing lives transformed that was it thank you oh god that every other thing that came as a fringe blessing was a surprise for doing this for serving you with all my heart this is what you are doing and when god finds that kind of heart he says you are doing this for me let's go to the next level i hope god is speaking to someone so that before you receive all this impartation and start running out and then just go and kill yourself for no reason god is there is a circumcision that god is doing in our hearts let me tell you many people have failed god they have failed god because they did not learn kingdom they did not learn kingdom when it has to do with kingdom your name decreases let every other name fade away that's the language of the kingdom let every other name fade away till there's only you let every other name fade away jesus take your place jesus take your place sing it one more time with conviction in your heart let every other name dethrone all those idols that have risen above the name of the Christ. Bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Jesus. That's how it works in this kingdom. There cannot be two kings in the same kingdom. That's why he took us to this side of his kingdom. He is the king of we kings here. Listen, look at me. The king understood this, Darius, and he made them to build a statue of himself, 90 feet tall. And he says, there's only one king in Babylon. If you hear the sound of the trumpet, no matter who you are, relinquish all your earthly duties, you become a worshiper immediately. And anyone who fails to worship, you are a rebel. I don't care how excellent your administrative skills are. When it has to do with the issue of the king, I don't want to know if you are the chief financier of Babylon. You must bow. And there were four Hebrew boys who said, King, we respect you. But there is, you don't know who sent us. There is a conflict of dominion. When it has to do with administration, we will respect you. When it has to do with our civil duties. But as far as our allegiance is concerned, your statue came too late. There is a king. He says, our God will deliver us. And the king watched and said, these boys, oh king, we are not careful. We are sent. We respect you. But there is a government that we have pledged our allegiance and there will be no negotiation and they 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 made the the fiery furnace seven times to the extent the bible records that those who threw them there were burned by the fire and they took them watch the jealousy of the king as soon as they arrived because the bible says where two or three are gathered even if it's in fire provided two or three are gathered I am there in their midst gathered in the challenge gathered in church gathered in pain where two or three are gathered doesn't matter the location if it is in my name I will come and defend my name hallelujah and the king said were there not four men I hope you know that the, the fourth man would have been invisible but he became visible because there was a message to prove that just because you see me standing alone does not mean I am alone just because you are doing business alone does not mean you are alone and when occasion demands the one with you who stands by you like a mighty terrible one he reveals himself to the world they will see the difference between you and him they will know you are not alone hallelujah 
No, you are not alone. You are not doing business alone. You are not in the office alone. It looks like you are walking alone. They see you alone. But you are jealously guarded. You were sent by the king. You are an ambassador beyond an employee. Carry that mentality. If I ask you who do you work for, your first question is one bank or whatever. And you are right. But from an eternal standpoint, you are very wrong. Hmm. The one who sent me ever before me before the bank saw you they only saw you because he sent you the corporation only saw you because he sent you they have discerned your value before he sent you so when they say go and you go back and cry and say i am finished you insulted the one who originally sent you someone shout send, send. one more time say send. send it's a mentality you must carry you may look ordinary, but you were sent from God. Oh, your parents said they finished giving birth. It just happens that you came. No, God forced you there. Because there, there's an agenda that still had your name on it. You see, when you carry this mentality, your orientation on many grounds begin to change. Your concept of rewards, your concept of men, your concept of love. Every, your approach, you live on earth like a foreigner. Even though you have tremendous influence over the people and the resources. But there is something about your mind. They know that your relationship is not connected to anything here because you are sent. No matter how long the ambassador of US is in Nigeria, he knows US is not his home. Yet you will see him driving convoys. Yet you will see him staying in the best of hotels. But he is eternally aware that I'm a U.S. citizen first. Sent on a mission. They name their mission after what sends them. And notice what happened. We had an incident recently, I was told, somewhere in the eastern part of the nation where, you know, there was an assault or so on U.S. citizens. And within moments, the Secretary of State had made a speech that is kingdom who is touching the one i sent and they say there's somebody he, he has touched everybody in that family like that and then god gives you a scripture to announce to that devil but i know whom i believed listen and i am persuaded that he's able to keep that which is committed to him not keep that which is available when you become that which is committed to him, his jealousy now comes in place to defend you. All that you have given me, he says, I have kept, John 17, and none is lost except the son of partition and that that scripture might be fulfilled. He's a keeper, not just a maker. So when he makes your business, he keeps it. So you can have longevity of impact. There's no need to be afraid. Will I last 10 years? No. If you know the one who keeps you and your loyalty and your obedience and your surrenderedness is in check, the dust will rise and fall. You will still stand. Are we together? So, when God begins to use you, listen carefully we're about to pray now when god begins to use you and announce you in various dimensions to the nations ladies and gentlemen you must have it at the back of your mind that you are not there for yourself every time pride begins to come fight it like you are fighting sin fight it like you are fighting the devil because it is a cancer that can destroy god fights anything that fights him even if he's the one that gave you I hope you know God can give you something he will later fight. <laughs> Just because he gave you, the moment it becomes an enemy to his program, even if it is you, he will get you out of the way. Is it in your Bible that there are people God resists? Is it in your Bible? Who resists them? That God himself can resist men. Talk more of things. It is not every loss that is demonic. There are some losses that have come because you have used it to become an enemy to God's program. He does not resist it because it's his character to deplete. Anything that stands the way of his program, even Jesus, when he became sin, the father turned his face from him. 
Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani, Father, me and you again? He said, no, this is not Jesus on the cross. This is a compendium of all men, an embodiment of sin. And he turned his face. I hope you know that God himself submits to the integrity of his word. That he has exalted his word even above his reputation. The word name there is his reputation. God is touched by the feelings of your infirmity. But he's only moved by his word. Touched with the feelings of your infirmity. But moved by his word. So just because you are crying does not guarantee that God will move. Even as God, there is a modus operandi that governs his activity. The word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He says the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3 says all things were made by him and without him. That means outside of him was not anything made that was made. That's John 1, 1 and 3 without him outside of his influence was not anything made hallelujah this is what gives us the confidence to do the things that we do this is what gives us the confidence this is what gives your man the confidence to know that 10 years from now calvary bible church will only be going from glory to glory why because there is a scriptural guarantee that if it is true that you are the just it says your path should be as the shining light that shineth ever brighter satan notwithstanding unto the perfect day when that scripture was written god was aware that satan was on earth and the scripture was still written are we together now yes there is no challenge that you are going through tonight that is new under the sun. There's none of us here who went through Job's kind of tragedy. Yet the Bible testifies that at the end of it, the latter end of Job's life was even greater than the former. In Job 42 and verse 10, the Bible says the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And then the Bible even tells us how it happens. It says that he gave Job twice as much as he had. The secret is found in verse 11. He says many of his acquaintances, his brethren, the people who left him before, they came and they ate bread with him in his house they bemoaned him and comforted him of all the calamities that had befallen him and the bible said every man gave him a piece of money so every man can give it just depends on who directs them the bible says every man plus the stingy relatives that man was crippled and they did not attend to him but when the king said give him i'm praying for someone in the name of jesus may the king ordain an instruction on earth for your rising May the king compel men to give. The Bible says every man gave. Sit down. Apostle, you don't know how greedy my uncle is. I respect your saying, but it's because you do not know that there is a name God is called, the father of spirits. That every spirit submits to him. When God compels a man to bless, Pharaoh, as hardened as Pharaoh was, he was the one who gave favor to the Egyptian, to the Israelites. To the point that when they had left, it was like a charm. Something came over him and he said, what did I do? I gave the gold of Egypt, pursue them. An influence can come upon men and compel them to bless and favor you regardless. Look at that scripture. Let me show you how God restored Job. Every man I read this scripture many years ago and I cried I said so every man can give don't let anybody tell you me God forbid I will not attend to you respect them and leave them go back to the king who sent you and said king you had the arrogance of your creation and the king will say leave me and them hmm. this king this mysterious king all powerful he's called every man gave unto him let's finish that scripture every man also gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold how many of them my question is were they not there from a logical standpoint at his time of pain and that time which was the best time to help him so don't blame somebody for forgetting you it depends on what is on your head and it depends on the verdict that was passed over you it says thou anointest my head with oil 
not my cup you anoint my head but i can know what is on my head by looking at my cup if your cup is empty stop blaming the business it's not the business the business is a report card that there is something you are not carrying or not carrying enough till there's only you let every other name fade away jesus take your place listen when you when you believe what i'm teaching you you will live a humble life but nobody on earth will bully you because everybody was created this emotional bully that goes on from nation to nation looking down on people by reason of whatever it is all that is absolute nonsense when you are indoctrinated and intoxicated with the extent of the love of the king for you i may have said it in this church if god says he's blessing 10 people i'll start praying for the remaining nine because one spot is gone already at the point he said it one spot is already booked that is how much he loves me do you believe this this is not a preacher sermon you can't fake these kinds of things for a long time one day it will become clear that you are talking nonsense believers why are we here tonight number one to experience the power of God the supernatural power that is invested in this kingdom we belong to a glorious kingdom we belong to a kingdom that is higher than the realm of science so don't ask how the growth disappeared you only know what you were taught in school but there are other dimensions higher than the <laughs> witchcraft in Africa should help us believe God easier because witchcraft has is a realm that is higher than the three-dimensional realm and people have seen a semblance you know in in Africa in marketplaces there are people I don't know if it happens here but there are many markets where people play with hyenas they play with swords that don't cut them these are manipulations of spiritual laws I'm not exalting witchcraft I'm just saying that possibility should already charge you to know that if this can happen look at what you know the level of technology right now is opening us up to dimensions all kinds of things and the king sits upon his throne and says I will make you the head and not the tail and you are there cracking your little mind saying how you put your little statistics the y the x and say lord it does not add up and he says take it away my thoughts are not your thoughts my ways are not your ways for as high and far apart as the heaven is yours is to believe him to believe him even through wisdom and say lord i may not understand the bible says just like you do not know how the bones of her who is with child are formed or the way of the wind so you do not know the ways of god that means the dynamics of how god manifests things god can say by tomorrow you are a millionaire and you say lord i do not believe this ask the land of samaria and ask the arrogance of the man upon whom the king leaned he said even if god will open the windows of heaven might this happen and i'm sure the king saying the windows of heaven do you know what happened the last time the windows of heaven were opened ladies and gentlemen it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom and all the blessings that come with that kingdom because the king is also your father comes from the word Abba the word Abba means your source your sustainer your protector your defender that means everything that plagues you becomes a concern to him so the Bible says to come boldly before the throne you are coming to meet a king except that it is a throne of grace not just a throne of justice it is a throne of grace so that in spite of your inadequacies you still have access to the king hallelujah this is the mentality I carry when I pray for the sick and minister and all the things that God does through my life, listen, this is all of me. You are intelligent. Look at me and look at the result. You know there's a missing part of the equation. <laughs> that missing part, only his size can feel. One plus Jesus is equal to the answer he puts there. Any answer he puts is right. One plus one is two mathematically. Are we together? 
one plus one plus one is three but one plus even if he's zero plus jesus doesn't matter what came the moment you add him there is no equal to is the answer he puts there creator of the universe what can you do what can you do jesus one more time i want you to sing it with me creator of the universe what can you do what can you do jesus i like this part says you're the name above every other name what can you change what can you change Jesus apostle are you saying at the instance of a prophetic word I can leave this meeting and go back home and things begin to change exactly that if you believe that you understood my sermon already apostle are you saying that I can leave this place like this and someone who has forgotten me can suddenly remember me yes sir yes sir yes sir apostle are you saying I can carry a grace out of this church that I did not come in with yes sir because this is the house of God Bethel the place of bread there is a hallowed bread of the spirit there is the anointing that can rest upon a man please believe this man of God are you saying apostle that something can come upon me that by Sunday when I climb my pulpit is going to be fire there yes sir listen 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 if water can turn to wine if soul can turn to Paul why can't poverty turn to prosperity why can't why can't weakness turn to strength but you see listen listen to me listen to me listen to me I'm only showing you how far God can go for your sake there is one more thing I will show you and then if all I do is to speak over you afterwards I will live satisfied are we together now God is able never forget this God is able never forget this God is able let this revelation make your problem become very small this is what encounters do they shrink everything the, the devil has over bloated and magnified are you aware that your children are going to school are you aware that the school fees has been multiplied are you aware that you have just one week and now you are sitting yes you may have been careless financially but he will solve that problem first before he will now teach you how to get it systemically he will not allow you suffer because you got yourself in a mess but he will still solve that problem before he teaches you the kingdom's way of systemically building wealth he will not allow you go through shame now that embarrassment is imminent this is the advantage we have in the kingdom please sit down i want you to write this now and then we'll pray please write this down there are three keys that control the manifestation of extraordinary results i felt stirred in my spirit to just say this three keys that control the manifestation of extraordinary results if i do not teach you this i hate to be a bearer of bad news but many of you may have shouted for for just an empty shout in vain i need to show you these three keys key number one the first key that controls the manifestation of extraordinary results is revelation knowledge revelation knowledge first the knowledge of god and then number two the knowledge of his systems god is a god of systems the first key 
for commanding extraordinary results is revelation knowledge and i'm saying there are two dimensions of knowledge there under that point number one the knowledge of god himself like you have been taught but number two the knowledge of the systems you call them the mysteries of the kingdom you call them the modus operandi of the kingdom now please look up it's important for you to understand that as mighty as god is he is the god of systems we see through scripture that he seldom does the same thing twice what god does his character is that he introduces a spiritual process and builds a system around that process for continuity are we together so he made the first man and the first woman and never had to make man again he built a system called reproduction are we together and it is by effectively practicing that system that we even have a problem with population on earth today that that after thousands of years that system still stands valid are we together now that when he planted in the garden he put within the tree the seed that represents a system for continuity are we together now so knowing god is wonderful but you must understand his modus operandi that means there is an economic system to the kingdom there is a system in the kingdom for influence there is a system in the kingdom for longevity are we together your assignment is not just to know the possibilities that this kingdom contains but to study the systems that lead to them those the the desires the prayer points that we have are spiritual outcomes there are exact systems that lead there so if i am in trouble there is a spiritual system for deliverance for instance i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise and he says so by calling upon him a combination of prayer and praise shall i be saved from my enemies that is a spiritual system at midnight paul and silas bound and doomed for destruction the bible says they prayed the same system and then they sang loud enough for the prisoners to hear them and there was deliverance for them are we together yes favor has a system we have taught in the body of christ respectfully speaking for many years that favor is unmerited i disagree i disagree favor is multi-dimensional it is only one dimension of favor that is unmerited that which is touching the saving grace but favor that manifests as results and abundance and prosperity is merited it works based on laws are we together proverbs 13 15 it says good understanding procured favor but the way of the transgressor is hard is that in your bible that means you can program favor and you can program its continuity so that it does not just happen once it can happen again and again regardless the location that you can master the laws of favor to a point that in 24 hours if you are not favored you will go for a retreat you can hold on to eternal life with that level of accuracy how about influence influence is there is an anointing that brings influence but there are systems in the kingdom that elevates a man to a position are we together now yes for instance when you become valuable and you provide constructive solutions that are needed and useful as far as a civilization is concerned and you know how to package your value intelligently and serve it to a targeted consumer base you will not only be rewarded it will translate to influence influence has laws now most believers especially in africa haven't rejoiced like we did earlier we just end in that realm of superstition and remain there and hope that since this king is great Oh, yeah, oh, I've been waiting. You are not lifting me. Whereas you can rewrite your story when you get tired. The systems of the kingdom were designed to bring predictability to the results of the believer. Are we together now? If a, if a terrorist goes to the farm to farm, will the crops grow? Please talk to me. Will the crops grow? Not minding that he's killing people. He will go to hell when Jesus comes. But as far as the Lord's seed time and harvest is concerned, it is a system and a dimension of God's power has been programmed within that system. So I need to tell you this. If you want to 
command extraordinary results it is knowledge dependent now in truth there are dimensions to our results that no amount of knowledge can be able to produce there is an added factor to it but that which is our responsibility we must hold on to and do diligently are we together now yes so revelation knowledge you must know god and you must understand the systems of the kingdom if i were you when i go back and i'm studying this this teaching i will write out the list of areas that are not working in my life honestly and sincerely and take responsibility under god then begin to study the systems that are connected to that outcome say for instance it looks like i love god with all my heart but this finance is not working rather than guessing and saying one day go better i would go and get say school of money and get the pathway to wealth and put those books and those tapes together are we together now because one of the ways that we obtain promises is to follow them ultimately we follow him but you can start by following them the them who are following him and you are still safe as you follow them follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise transformation is impossible until there is a reference so you must have people whose materials and minds he says look unto abraham your father and to sarah that body he says for i called him alone and blessed him and increased him you're not the first to desire rising so on the study from scripture what did they do and isaac sowed in that land and reaped that same year a hundredfold and the lord multiplied him he began to prosper he worked strong he was very great until the philistines envied him are we together yeah. let's assume that you're always losing variable relationships everybody who loves you later leaves you after you cast out the spirits that bring bad luck if you stop there you are in trouble the spirits themselves will laugh at you because they know that there is a dimension of deliverance that comes through transformation casting out the spirit influence is only the first phase of deliverance the chiefest part of deliverance comes by giving yourself a renewed orientation that he that wants friends must show himself friendly so you go and buy books that help you to master relationships you begin to learn laws like friendliness like honor are we together now when you learn these principles people skills you find out that you begin to have a greater command of valuable relationships that is a kingdom system what of the anointing you find out that it looks like you are limited as far as manifesting the anointing is concerned you go and get materials that teach you how to command and to grow in the anointing because grace and peace can be multiplied everything that comes to you from god comes as a seed he gives you that seed together with the wisdom that makes for the multiplication and in this case that wisdom is the holy spirit in partnership with the word you can learn the principles that make for your rising are we together revelation knowledge number two faith the second key that commands extraordinary result is faith please put in bracket actions of obedience in simple terms now that ye know these things the bible says happy are you if you do them having abundant knowledge without taking steps of faith will only end you in tragedy you must sustain the courage that now that you know these things you must summon the courage to act in faith knowing that god will back you and then finally number three the anointing the assignment of the anointing the anointing is the engracing of god coming to honor your obedience we were discussing i think it was yesterday night or so with um uh, your man of god and we're just talking and he was talking about extra and ordinary that they come from two words there is extra god's dimension and god's role there is ordinary your own role if you leave extra alone it remains potent in the realm of the spirit ordinary alone that becomes very barren to produce anything supernatural is that combination of extra and ordinary that produces extraordinary i agree i agree it is always the spirit and the bride say come it's not the spirit alone and it's not the bride alone so when the spirit say be healed the bride must also echo be healed for healing to come when the spirit says prosper the bride must walk in keeping with the principles that make for prosperity for prosperity to manifest the bible says the word became flesh 
the process of becoming flesh was the holy spirit and a human vessel don't forget the holy spirit alone as powerful as he was could not produce jesus in the flesh are we together now yes not because of bankruptcy of ability but honor to his system that if ever a spirit must manifest on earth wearing a mortal body a human vessel in this case a woman must play that role the holy spirit had to patiently look at how he lies with mary zachariah made the same mistake mary made and he was punished and yet for mary how shall these things be and it took time to explain and she said be it unto me if mary rejected you have to go to another virgin and start begging because it is the spirit and the bride now the bride is available what then stops the spirit the problem is never with the holy spirit he is ever willing is the laxity and the carelessness of the bride to learn the ways of the kingdom are we together remember there were 10 virgins there's no time to tell you that story but all 10 were virgins their mistake was that some were foolish and what was the foolishness there they had the word but they ignored the ministry of the spirit the oil so with time because of the delay of the bridegroom there was no oil and the oil finished and they had to run to go and buy returning the door was closed so that extra factor is called wisdom not just having the lamb but having the oil we're about to pray are we together now and when we pray we may not have time to take testimonies my apologies because we have to honor the time but i'm going to speak over the sick and over those who are oppressed i will speak over you and declare prophetically over you then we pray that god will just release his grace upon our lives and we are done tonight but i the real assignment is what i have done now these truths that you have received go back and camp with it and turn yourself into a more superior version of yourself that brings great glory and great honor to the king that the testament of your life will become galatians 1 24 and they glorified god in me please rise on your feet let's pray make sure you are not distracted this is a very prophetic moment now lift your voice in one minute and begin to ask the lord to grant you a mighty visitation a mighty visitation even by the spirit of god mighty visitation by the spirit of the living god in the name of jesus now you are trusting god for healing in any part of your body i want you to just place your hand right there place your hand right there very quickly if you are standing in for someone a loved one you can touch yourself as a sign if it's a part of your body you cannot lay hands on just make contact with your chest i want you to believe that jesus is able to heal and for those of you who are watching i want to pray for the sick right now hallelujah lay your hands and we'll pray you can use the other sessions to testify you can let pastor and the church know that jesus touched you in the course of this meeting in the name of jesus christ shout a loud amen, amen. in the name of jesus christ amen. now i decree and i declare that every spirit that is back of any infirmity plaguing anyone here or our viewers online in the name of jesus the son of the living god i command that spirit to leave you right now Amen. i command that demonic influence to leave you right now Amen. now i declare be healed in the name of jesus Amen. be healed in the name of jesus Amen. from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet i declare supernatural healing healing of the eyes in the name of jesus migraines be healed in jesus name bone conditions be healed in jesus name blood conditions be healed in jesus name cancers die in jesus name ulcers be gone in jesus name 
kidney problems i bring life and healing for you in jesus name anyone suffering with the issue of blood i declare be healed now fibroids and all kinds of demonic growths i command them to leave your body now hiv be healed in jesus name heart conditions be healed in jesus name and if there is anyone here who is having anyone in the hospital maybe your loved ones in the name of jesus i release my faith and we stand under the corporate anointing we declare life to them right now that that same power that raised christ from the dead may that same power rest upon them right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ now hear me every spirit that has impeded your progress in life and in destiny in the name of jesus christ who is the son of the living god i decree and declare by this mantle and this oil i declare they give way right now believe it they give way right now believe it they give way right now father i am praying for everyone here who has not experienced the favor of god in the name of jesus by the power of the prophetic i decree and declare from tonight experience dramatic levels of favor the kind of favor that accelerates your life and destiny i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ, name of jesus christ. hear me anyone here who has lost money you've lost resources or maybe some business and things went down i declare by the power of prophecy between now and the next three months i call on the god of my covenant may you jack back to life may your finances jack back to life in the name of jesus christ for every home here where there has been mourning and languishing it looks like nobody is rising and nobody is going forward he said it was the lord that caused moses and aaron to advance i stand as one sent by god i push you prophetically go forward go forward go forward hey i prophesy to someone to ministry go forward to business go forward to career go forward in the name of jesus christ go forward in the name of jesus christ you hear me the bible says in second corinthians chapter 9 when you begin to read from verse 8 upwards it says and god is able to make all grace say all grace that means graces are multi-dimensional god is able to make not some grace all grace are bound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency you know what sufficiency is the capacity to meet expectations without disappointing is called sufficiency so that ye having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work remember you have been taught here that your results bring glory to jesus because there is a sermon there is a kind of evangelism that happens at the instance of your results and god is saying to ensure that you keep producing results i can coordinate every grace you need the grace for speed the grace for influence are we together now every grace that is needed so that you are sufficient i'm about to pray for you now i'm standing upon the grace of the angel over this commission and all the men and women of god here represented i'm going to speak over your life this will be about my final assignment 
please just help those under the anointing you don't have to bring them out but i want to release something upon you and sincerely for as many whose hearts will be open my god will surprise you yeah. hallelujah now i decree and declare the grace that draws men to the secret place that grace for encounter maybe not for everybody but let it fall on someone now the grace for the secret place help them please that translates to a life of prayer a life of consecration may that grace that attracts the mantle of your destiny please help them receive it in the name of Jesus number two I pray for you there is a grace that can make all men see the spirit of revelation the eyes of your understanding being enlightened receive that grace right now receive that grace right now may your eyes be open to understand the ways of God may your apparatus may your eyes be open in the name of Jesus Christ The Bible says, then open ye their understanding that they might understand scripture. Number three, can I pray for you? There is a grace for speed, dominion over time, that in a short time, you can do so much. I don't know who desires that grace, but may that fire, I stand by the apostolic. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Speed in ministry. Speed in destiny. Speed in your life. Help them please speed in the name of jesus you will run like elijah you will overtake the chariots of ahab in the name of jesus christ speed speed that 10 years is put in one year that one year is put in one month in the name of Jesus Christ now hear me we're wrapping up but I want you to listen please don't just jump for nothing make sure you are receiving something my God fire is burning in this place there is a grace for influence and visibility when that grace comes upon you it is impossible for a territory to reject you it is a grace for influence is the hear ye him anointing maybe not for everyone but for someone here you have worked on your skill you have worked on your value what you need is that grace i stretch my hands by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace i command rise and shine rise and shine beyond lagos beyond the west beyond nigeria rise and shine by the spirit of the living god please help that lady so she doesn't injure herself in the name of jesus christ hallelujah please help them you don't have to be an usher we're wrapping up but if for those under the anointing please manage them so they don't injure themselves hear me the Bible says speaking to Abraham it says from where thou art lift up your eyes not from where you want to go from where you are lift up your eyes and look northwards southwards eastwards northwards it says as far as your eyes can see forget about where you are if you can lift your eyes let me tell you this from any location everybody on earth can see the sky from any location you don't need to travel to Kano or to your village or to America to see the sky it's the privilege of everyone once you can look up now watch this we are wrapping up my sincere apologies sir. listen how many of you believe that there is a grace called honor you see let me tell you what honor is honor is an engracing from god upon your life 
that makes people to perceive you correctly and to reward you to match your sacrifice is called honor when the grace for honor is not upon you you will always be shortchanged based on the perception people have you can be the son of the living god but they will call you a carpenter's son because the grace for honor is not upon you listen to me he said take joshua the son of none and said to anoint him with the spirit then he says take some of your honor and put upon him you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred upon you upon another there are many of us here you are so great but because this mantle is not on you you are not perceived to match the true extent of your sacrifice it is amazing that those we call the best of everything in our world are not truly the best they are just the ones who have access honor as perceived in the eyes of a generation there are people in villages today who are living longer than those who the world says are the longest people but the grace for honor is not on them when the grace for honor is on you men will look for you listen baby jesus was born he had not solved anybody's problem as a baby born a compendium full of grace and truth including the grace for honor and three men magi came with gold frankincense and myrrh as matured adults to salute a baby when honor rests upon you you will marvel and wonder god will lift up your perception in the eyes of those who can bless you and cause them to reward you to match the true level of your sacrifice let me pray for someone who truly desires this grace maybe in your office maybe in ministry i decree and declare here at this kingdom global conference i prophesy upon someone may that mantle for honor rest upon you may that mantle for honor rest upon you may that mantle for honor rest upon you it will speak in your workplace it will speak in your church it will speak in your territory it will speak in the business world in the name of jesus christ The final impartation that I want to do tonight, I want you to listen, please. The final impartation that I want to bring upon your life, if you will believe and if you will receive. There is something called the gift of men. The, when God truly wants to honor you, he does not give you things he gives you men listen carefully when god truly wants to honor you he gives you men ideas are useless until men give life to them business is all about men not products the products are midwives the uh, the final person is a man kill every man on earth and they will give you access to the gold mines access to the malls and it will be useless the ministry of men please watch this i'm saying this because this is the assignment of the grace for favor the grace for favor does not just bring things primarily it grants you access to unusual kindness unusual acceptance and unusual access all men dependent you may have heard me say ladies and gentlemen that who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters if you are esther it's not enough to know god as wonderful as it is the king must like you otherwise nothing will bring you to the palace if you are vashti pray that the king does not suddenly hate you because even as queen you will leave the palace in shame and he will never think twice about it let me tell you the truth when god the true proof of favor is not just material resources those are elementary things the true proof of favor is access to the hearts of men and that includes kings the bible talks about nehemiah the cup bearer of the king because he carried a strange favor the king looked at his countenance and without asking without asking the king the king said why is it you don't look happy 
and he says oh king i'm here but the walls of my city is not being built and the king said i will not only give you resources i will write letters and i will send you let nobody come to disturb you when men who came in the spirit of the antichrist called sambalat and tobias they came and they saw him building and they wanted to frustrate him the bible says he used a skill to build that every man must build with one hand he held the sword and with another hand he was building if you only hold the sword with two hands you will not build and if you only hold your building materials with two hands you will not build one hand must hold the sword your spiritual contact with the realm of the spirit the other hand is your technical skill this is how we build every wall that brings shame but that happened at the instance of favor i know what the favor of god can do believe me when i tell you this if this is the only impartation you receive tonight for some of you by the favor of god god can accelerate your life and bring beauty and color to your destiny and wipe the tears of your loved ones for god's sake you already have wisdom to manage what favor brings so we are not afraid of praying because favor without wisdom will only bring testimonies that don't have longevity testimonies that last is a combination of favor favor brings wisdom keeps this house is a fountain of wisdom god has so lavishly put upon his choice servant the wisdom that it takes therefore i pray every man that must arise on your course by the favor of god in the name of jesus receive of their ministry now receive of their ministry now i prophesy to the west i prophesy to the east i prophesy to the north and south every man that must favor you are sent by god in the order of job beginning from this weekend may they show up in your life Amen. hallelujah listen to me everyone please no movement let's honor jesus for one last time our time is fast spent my apologies for stretching you i want to make an altar call right now this is the greatest miracle here beyond the testimony you are going to be bringing I saw so many people outside delighted to see many that the Lord brought and we salute those of you outside and then for those of you who are following by way of television following by way of internet listen to me no matter what you get from this meeting if it is at the expense of your relationship with Jesus and the expense of your eternal destiny you did not do much I want to make one last call tonight let's minimize movement as much as possible there has to be someone here tonight who is saying apostle if you would give me a chance i want to make it right with jesus i'm not calling for everybody but i'm calling for one person who will be bold enough to say i'm not ashamed i have seen the works of god i know by my spirit that jesus is calling me remember rejecting the king is rejecting life because he is the king of kings and the lord of lords i'm going to count one to five for as long as this space is still available i would request that you come and stand here when the space gets full then you may need to stand where you are and those who are outside i would ask you to walk to your projector stand i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain come and stand here as i count five one let's celebrate them as they come run to jesus two Don't be ashamed. Come. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will fall. I have made a choice to listen for your voice. Wherever. You're still coming we have a few seconds for you we're out of time but it's my joy and my honor to lead you to this jesus the one we have so greatly spoken about from yesterday and even till today and all through the course of the conference those of you who are in front i salute you for making this noble decision 
and those who are outside those following online please may i request that you lift your right hand if you can those of you in front and say this after me please say this loud and clear say lord jesus one more time say lord jesus i have heard your word and i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god thank you heavenly father for these ones in the name of jesus i thank you because you have brought them to yourself and the bible declares that as many who will come you will in no wise cast away i declare your sins forgiven by the authority of scripture and i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god from tonight you walk in righteousness and you move from glory to glory in jesus name i pray now one last instruction for you may i please request that you follow the counselor waving his hands all of you together in concert to my left which will be your right let's honor them as they go let's honor them as they go hallelujah dr lumine manuel sir thank you so much and your dear wife thank you calvary Baptist church the lord bless you Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.